Hey guys, welcome back to another lecture video for Chem 104. In this lecture video, we are going to learn how to name secondary amines, and we're also going to learn how to name tertiary amines. So let's go ahead and get started. When we're naming secondary amines, um, we first have to recognize that we have a secondary amine in our organic compound. And so one of the main characteristics of secondary amines that differentiates it from a primary amine is that it has two alkyl groups or two R groups that's bonded to the central nitrogen. And so um, as a way of review, we have this central nitrogen and it's going to be covalently bonded to two R groups. And these R groups can either be the same or they can be different. And finally, we're going to have on that central nitrogen, a hydrogen and a lone pair. And so if you wanted to abbreviate what I just um, drew in passing, um, a secondary amine has a general structure or general formula of R2. So these two R groups are going to be covalently bonded to a nitrogen and that nitrogen will also have a hydrogen covalently bonded to it, and it'll have a lone pair. And so now that we um, have an idea of how to identify a secondary amine from a primary amine, we're gonna go ahead and go through the uh, rules on how to name them. So like always, um, we are going to find the uh, longest carbon chain that has the secondary amine attached to it. We're going to go ahead and name the parent structure so that we're going to name the longest carbon consecutive carbon chain. And then we're going to drop the E at the very end of the parent name and attach amine um, as our suffix. So in place of the E, we're going to add amine. We're also going to number our carbons so as to give the amine, the secondary amine, the lowest possible carbon number. And so all three of these rules is something that we've seen for primary amines and that much hasn't changed. However, it is this last rule that will differentiate how to name primary amines from secondary amines. And we will see this rule again for tertiary amines. Since <clears throat> secondary amines have two alkyl groups, um, how do we know which one is going to be the parent chain? And so it turns out that the shortest alkyl group between these two R groups um, that's, cov that's covalently bonded to the amine is going to be treated as a substituent and not as a parent chain. And so to differentiate this uh, substituent, the, the shortest alkyl group that's between these two alkyl groups, we are going to write a capital N with a dash in front of the shortest alkyl group. And since we're treating this shortest alkyl group as a substituent, it's going to be written before um, the parent chain. Okay. So that, that theme we've, we've constantly seen um, when, when we're naming these organic compounds such that the substituent is always named before the parent chain. And um, let's see here, we are going to make sure that this shortest alkyl group is always named first before any of the other substituents um, that's found on the main parent chain. So we're gonna go ahead and go through some examples that would demonstrate this. So let's go ahead and look at uh, this first example. Here, 
um, we see a secondary amine. And we know that it's secondary because this um, nitrogen is covalently bonded to one, two R groups. And so looking at, let me change my color here. Looking at these two R groups, I have a two carbon R group of the, uh, on the left hand side of the nitrogen. And I have a one carbon R group that's found at the very bottom of that nitrogen. And so since this is going to be the smallest or the smaller carbon chain that's covalently bonded to that nitrogen, we're gonna go ahead and um, treat this carbon as our substituent. And so a one carbon um, compound is going to be methyl. But we have to communicate to the reader that this methyl is not any ordinary substituent. It's directly bonded to the nitrogen of the secondary amine. And so we're going to put a capital N in front of this methyl. Um, so we're going to write N-methyl. And this is going to describe this um, carbon over here. So that leaves us with this two carbon compound. And since this is the, the larger of the two, this is going to act as our parent chain. And so the, since we have a two carbon compound, we're gonna go ahead and name this parent as ethane since it's a single bond. So very similar to primary amines, we're gonna cross out that last E, and then we're gonna add the suffix amine to it. And so what we get is ethanamine. And so in this case, um, since this carbon is directly bonded to this nitrogen, and this carbon is directly bonded to this nitrogen, there's really no point for us to put um, a number in front of uh, in front of like methyl or in front of ethane. So we, we don't say one ethanamine, we don't say um, N one methyl. The reason is because it's implied that this nitrogen is going to be bonded to this, to the first carbon. And so we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these two together. And when we put these two pieces together, we're going to write the substituent first. And so here we have N methyl And then we're going to name the parent chain, which is ethanamine. And that would be the name of this organic compound, N-methyl, N-methyl, ethanamine. And so the moment that you guys see an, a capital N in front of um, an uh, a substituent, that's going to imply that this methyl group is covalently bonded to the nitrogen. And so that is going to be an indicator that you have either a secondary or tertiary amine when you guys are going from the name to its structure. <clears throat> So if I were to translate this name, 
I see that I'm working with an amine, so I know that I have a nitrogen. And um, on one of those, one of those bonds is going to be an ethane. And so I'm going to put in one, two carbons. And so since I see that there is an N, that means this nitrogen is covalently bonded to a methyl group. And so therefore, I'm going to have a methyl group that's covalently bonded to it. And since there's nothing left uh, in my name for me to add on to the structure that I've built, then I'm simply going to add that lone pair on the nitrogen and I'm going to draw the hydrogen. And so this is one R group. This is another R group, making this nitrogen secondary. All right. <clears throat> and so let's go ahead and look at the next example. Um, and so for this example, if we look, if we use the nitrogen as our central point, our focal point, we can go ahead and uh, observe that <clears throat> to the right of the nitrogen, we have one, two carbons. And to the left of that nitrogen, we have one, two, three, four carbons. And so since two carbons is the lesser between the two R groups, right? so this is uh, one of the R groups, then we know that this R group is going to act as our substituent. And therefore, when we name this two carbon substituent, which is an ethyl, we're going to have to write the letter N in front of it, indicating that this ethyl is covalently bonded to the nitrogen of that secondary amine. And so that's going to um, communicate to the reader that this four carbon compound is going to be the parent chain. And so since we have a four carbon compound, this is going to be butte. They're all single bonds. So if you guys are looking at this, oops. So if you guys are looking at this, they're all single bonds. So this is butane. I'm going to cross out that E and then put an amine, so butanamine. Um, and that would be pretty much it. So notice that um, the carbon number one is directly on nitrogen. So I don't really need to put um, a carbon number in front of butanamine. And so I'm gonna put these two pieces together. So since um, my substituent is always named first, I'm going to say N-ethyl, and then I'm going to write butanamine at the very end. And this would be the name of my organic compound for this specific secondary amine. Once again, if I wanted to draw this, I would um, first look at my root, which in this case is butte. So I know that I have a four carbon compound. Um, and they're all single bonds because I see it's butan, not butene. Um, here I see an amine, so on that fourth carbon, I need to put a nitrogen. And since I have an N in front of this ethyl, that's going to tell me that um, on the nitrogen of my skeletal structure, I also need to draw an ethyl group. And now that I've translated everything, every little piece, from this name into a skeletal structure, I just need to fill in the missing pieces. 
And so we know that nitrogen has to follow the octet rule. So currently there's one, two electrons, three, four electrons, five, six electrons, seven, eight electrons. And so by drawing our lone pair and a covalent bond to uh, what used to be an invisible hydrogen, we now have our final structure that is um, reflective of its name, N-ethylbutanamine. All right, so let's go ahead and um, take a look at this next example. And so um, we're going to go ahead and, and number find the, the longest carbon chain. Here we have two. And um, what's covalently bonded to this nitrogen is, all, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so it looks like we have a seven carbon chain. Now, if I just take one step back and put one, at, uh, one up at the top, I'm still going to get the same thing. It's seven. And so since I have a seven carbon chain at the top of that nitrogen, this two carbon chain that's right next to the nitrogen is going to act as my substituent. And so here in this case, I have um, an ethyl, oops, and this ethyl is covalently bonded to a nitrogen. And so I need to put a capital N in front of the ethyl. All right. And so looking at the top part of my organic compound, since I have a seven carbon chain, I know that I'm going to be working with the prefix hept. And so since all of the bonds are single bonds, then this is going to be heptane. And so since this organic compound is bonded to a nitrogen, okay, it's bonded to a nitrogen, then I'm going to erase the E and add amine. Now what's different about this amine compared to the other structures that we looked at um, in these two examples is that this amine is not at the very tip. It's not um, on the end, so to speak, of that parent chain. It's actually in the middle. And so we need to number this carbon chain such that we would get the lowest possible carbon number on the carbon that is covalently bonded to the nitrogen. And so if I number um, my carbons from left to right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now if I number my carbons right to left, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, and so it looks like three is the lowest uh, is, is the lowest possible carbon number for where the nitrogen is covalently bonded to. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my numbering system in green because that numbering system is incorrect. And so, for this scenario, we would have to communicate to the reader that the amine is going to be on carbon 3. All right. And so um, 
The last thing that we have not done yet is this carbon that is in yellow. And so this is a methyl, it's a one carbon substituent. And it turns out that it's on carbon six. And so we're gonna go ahead and write six dash methyl to fully describe uh, this substituent. And like any substituent that is found on the parent chain, that six methyl is going to be placed in front of it. And so I'm going to scoot this guy over and put in the front six dash methyl. And so um, everything that you guys see here, six dash methyl dash three dash heptanamine is going to describe this portion of the organic compound. Now the last thing that we need to do is simply put these two pieces together. And we always put the R group that is covalently bonded to the nitrogen in the very, very front. And so the final name of the structure is going to be N dash ethyl dash six dash methyl dash three dash heptanamine. And so if we wanted to <clears throat> convert this name into its structure, um, the first thing that I personally want to do is find um, the number of carbons in my parent chain. So that's seven. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on the third carbon, I have an amine. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw nitrogen on the third carbon. Um, and so on the sixth carbon, I have a methyl group. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have a methyl group on my sixth carbon. And then I have um, an ethyl that's covalently bonded to my nitrogen. And so since this is my nitrogen, I am going to draw an ethyl, which is a two carbon compound. Um, and so whatever is not shown, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in from my nitrogen. So remember nitrogen wants to have an octet. So right now it only has four electrons bonded to it or shared. And so I know that um, since this is a secondary amine because I have two R groups, that means I have one hydrogen and the last two electrons are going to be a lone pair. And so this is how I would draw this structure from its name. So it's, it's more like you guys are reading backwards. You're gonna start from the parent name, and then you're just going to keep on adding on until you've incorporated every single piece into your skeletal structure. All right, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at our, our last example. So here we have um, this specific compound. Um, we can tell that it's a secondary amine because it's covalently bonded to one, two R groups. And so um, we want to identify the longest carbon chain. 
So here we have a one carbon compound. It's probably not gonna be our longest carbon. And so since it's attached to the nitrogen, we're going to say N-methyl. Next, we're going to look at the other R group and identify that there is one, two, three, four, five carbons. So this is a five carbon chain in which it's going to get pent as its um, root or prefix. Um, and so now that I know it's a five carbon chain and they're all single bonds, then I'm going to say that this is pentane. But since this pentane is attached to a nitrogen, I'm going to go ahead and erase that last E and then put an amine. So I have pentanamine. Um, and so if you guys are looking at this structure, I want you guys to notice that this nitrogen is not covalently bonded to the end of that carbon. And so since it's not covalently bonded to the end of the carbon, then we need to communicate to the reader what carbon number this nitrogen is bonded to on the, on the longest carbon chain. And so it turns out that it's bonded to the second carbon. So this is one, two, three, four, five. And so we're going to put a two dash in front of two pentanamine, or in front of pentanamine, to indicate to the reader that this amine is located on carbon number two. And notice that I have no substituent um, on this uh, longest carbon chain. And so I'm pretty much done in terms of numbering or naming the pieces. I just need to put these two pieces together. And so I always want to describe my substituent first. So I have N-methyl. And then um, I'm going to describe uh, this piece as 2 dash, uh, dash 2 dash pentanamine. And that would be my final answer. Now, if I were to, you know, add some stuff on the parent chain, then you guys would just build on. And so uh, let's look at an example here. So I'm going to use this, this blank um, organic compound. So we still have this N-methyl. So let's just say that we have, I don't know, um, another methyl here, then we have like a chloro here. How would we name this? And so um, since this is a one carbon compound that's attached to this nitrogen, we're, it's going to get this uh, N in front of the methyl group. And so since we didn't really change the parent chain, so to speak, we know the numbering system already, so this is one, two, three, four, five. And so if we wanted to name this parent chain with all of the substituents, since it's a five carbon compound, we're going to go ahead and put in pentanamine or pentane and then erase the E, put the amine. So we have pentanamine. And the nitrogen is covalently bonded on the second carbon. So we're going to put two in front of it. So it's two dash pentanamine. Now, if you guys look here, I have a methyl in the third carbon. So that's three methyl. And I have um, a chlorine on the fourth carbon. So that's four chloro. Since I have two different substituents, I want to organize them by um, uh, alphabetically. 
So looking at the first letter, C comes before M. And so I would have to write 4-chloro first. And then I would put in the 3-methyl in between. And now I'm just going to connect um, my, my pieces through the use of the dash because I'm going from letter to number. And so this would uh, represent the name of the parent structure that's to the left of this nitrogen. So to complete this, uh, to complete the name of this compound, we're simply going to add N-methyl in front of everything. And so the final answer is going to be N-methyl dash four um, dash chloro dash three dash methyl dash two dash pentanamine. And this would be the name of this organic structure that has a methyl group and a chlorine group added to it. And so, um, you know, all, all of these uh, pieces, if you will, um, we've learned how to name from previous uh, chapters, previous sections. Now we're just adding on new rules specific to amines. So if I wanted to name, or not name, if I wanted to draw the skeletal structure from this name, the first thing that I would do is look at the very end of the name because it's going to tell me my longest carbon chain. So I have five carbons. It's pentan. So since it's an, that's a single bond. If it was <clears throat> en, for example, that would be a double bond. <clears throat> and so I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So that's my five carbon compound. And uh, it looks like on the second carbon, so I'll just make this guy my second carbon, um, I have an amine, so I'm going to draw a nitrogen going up. Okay. I don't know if this is a primary, secondary, or tertiary amine, just based on you know, the, the name of the parent chain, I need more information. <clears throat> and so it looks like uh, on the parent chain, the pentan, I have a methyl group on the third carbon. So since it's carbon number three, it's carbon number two, I have a methyl. And on carbon number four, I have a chloro. So this is carbon four. And then I have this N-methyl. So this tells me that I have a methyl group that is covalently bonded to my nitrogen. And so since I have one, two R groups, I know that this is a secondary amine. And so um, to ensure that my nitrogen has the full octet, I need to add in that lone pair and then one hydrogen um, bonded to the nitrogen. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. And that would be my skeletal structure for, uh, you know, this, this name. Yeah. And so if you guys were to look <clears throat> at what I drew, and what you guys see here, obviously it's not exactly the same. It's actually just flipped. Um, so if you guys just flip this structure, 
they would more or less overlap. Okay. And so hopefully you guys um, understood how to name these amines. Um, if you guys are working with cyclic secondary amines, um, it, this one, once again, it's pretty straightforward. This is an methyl. That's the shortest carbon chain. This is the longest carbon chain, and there's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, for cyclic alkenes, wherever that functional group is, this one is always carbon number one, and it's not indicated in the name, um, just because it's always carbon number one. <clears throat> and so the name of this compound would be N-methyl. And then, um, so that would finish this part. This part right here is going to be cyclo. hexane, but remember, we're working with an amine, so I'm going to erase the E and put in amine. So this is going to be N-methylcyclohexanamine, and I would be done. All right, so um, hopefully after going through uh, this exercise, you guys know how to name um, these as secondary amines. Actually, let's just do one more with a double bond. So let's go ahead and use this structure and I'm going to put a double bond here and I'm going to put another halogen right here. Actually, let's not make that. Let's make this bromo. Okay. So how would we name this compound? And I'm going to move this. Oops. down here and so we if we have a structure that looks like this how would we um, name this and so here we have a two carbon compound on the nitrogen and so we know this piece at the bottom is going to be an ethyl and so now we just have to name this piece at the very top And so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is um, hept. Since there's a double bond, I know that this is heptene. I'm going to erase the E and add amine because it's covalently bonded to a nitrogen. And now I need to describe the carbon number for both the double bond and the amine. And so since I need to describe the carbon numbers, I'm going to separate out the double bond from the amine. And so, <clears throat> If I were to number my carbon chain such that the carbon that contains the nitrogen has the lowest carbon number, it would be from left to right. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nitrogen gets priority. And so on carbon number three, I have my amine, so I'm going to put hep10-3-amine. And then 
looks like on carbon number four, that's where my double bond starts. So I'm going to put a four in front of hep 10. So that's four dash hep 10 dash three dash um, amine. And so this describes my carbon chain. So the last thing I need to describe is my substituent. Here I have a 2-bromo and I have a 6-methyl. So since those two substituents are found on the carbon chain, um, I'm going to go ahead and add on to it. Um, so bromo, the B in bromo comes before the M in methyl. And so I have 2 dash bromo. Um, once this is named, I can go ahead and do my methyl. So this is going to be 6 dash methyl. Oops. Dash four dash hep ten dash three dash amine. And so this entire name is reflective of this parent chain. So the last thing that I need to add to this to this name here is going to be the N ethyl. And so the N ethyl is always going to be first. And so I'm simply going to move this whole name down and put a dash in front of the two. And so the name of this structure is going to be N-ethyl-2-bromo-6-methyl-4-hep10-3-amine. Pretty long name. Um, and so once again, if I were to try to draw this name, I'm going to focus on my parent, my longest carbon chain, which is hept. And so this is going to be a seven carbon chain. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it looks like I have a double bond on carbon four. So one, two, three, four. So there's my double bond. And it looks like I have an amine on carbon three. So one, two, three. So I'm, go I'm going from left to right, by the way. So I have this, have this, have this, have this, have this drawn out. Next is my six methyl. So 6-methyl is drawn out. Next is 2-bromo. Two 2-bromo. Two That's drawn out. Last thing I need, oops. Last thing I need is my ethyl and the nitrogen. So since I have an amine on the third carbon, which is this guy right here, that means I need an ethyl, so 1-2-carbon on nitrogen. So since I have an amine, I need to make sure that it fulfills its octet. And if I were to draw the lone pair and the hydrogen, then it would finalize my skeletal structure. And this would be the um, skeletal structure, one way to represent the skeletal structure for this organic compound. All right. So now that um, we've gone through one example of a double bond and a couple of examples for substituents on a secondary amine, as well as an example of a cyclic um, alkane um, that's covalent bonded to a secondary amine, we can go ahead and move on to the next, uh, excuse me, we're going to move on to tertiary amines. And so 
when we're naming tertiary amines, um, we have to keep in mind that tertiary amines have three alkyl groups. And so we have this central nitrogen that's covalently bonded to three R groups and a, a lone pair. Now these R groups can be the same R group or they can be different R groups. And if we wanted to abbreviate all of these R groups, if you will, we can say R3 and then N. Now remember for tertiary amines, there's no hydrogens left over. We've replaced all of the hydrogens with an R group. And so when we're naming these tertiary amines, um, our first step is to find you know, the longest carbon chain with the nitrogen attached. So here in this case, there's no hydrogens left, so that's a typo. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to make this permanent. Um, so we're going to go ahead and name the parent chain, drop the E, and add amine as a suffix. So that's pretty familiar with uh, primary and secondary amines. We're going to number the chain to give the carbon that is covalently bonded to the amine the lowest possible number. Now, since there are three R groups for this amine, that means the two shortest alkyl group on the amine are going to be treated as a substituent. And its position is going to be written with a nitrogen or an, a capital N with a dash in the front. Okay, so it's very similar to secondary amines, but this time we're going to do it twice okay? because there's uh, in total three R groups and two of them will be shorter than the other. So we're going to go ahead and just look at um, a few examples here to kind of get our feet wet. And so looking at this first example, we have an R group. So that's one R group. This is another R group. This is another R group. And so um, looking at the, the R groups that I've circled, I want you guys to notice that the two shortest R group would be this one right here and this one right here. So this is a one carbon and this is a two carbon R group. Here there are one, two, three, four carbons. So this is a four carbon R group. And so uh, we are going to name this one carbon R group that's covalently bonded to this nitrogen as N-methyl. And then we're going to name this two carbon R group that's covalently bonded to this nitrogen as N-ethyl. And then this four carbon R group is going to be butane, drop the E, and put in the amine. So this is butanamine. And since this carbon, carbon number one, is covalently bonded to that nitrogen, um, we don't need to, to put in that um, carbon number. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put these pieces together. And when we put these pieces together, since we have uh, two R groups with a capital N in the front, we're going to um, name this alphabetically. So the E comes before M. So this is going to be N dash ethyl. dash, oops, N dash methyl. <clears throat> and so this is the only, this is one of our, our exceptions. I know that N is an, a letter. And typically when we do letter to letter, we don't put a dash. 
And so since this letter represents the amine, and not so much the letter N, we need to put this dash to separate the two substituents, ethyl and methyl. So once again, it's like one of these random rules um, that you just need to be aware of. All right, so now that we have the ends and ethyl and methyl written out, we're simply gonna go ahead and put in um, our parent chain. And so here in this case, we can put in butanamine. Okay. Now, if you guys had wanted to number this as carbon number one, you can put in one dash butanamine. Um, and so if you're going to put that one there, that one is going to be placed in the middle between methyl and butanamine. And so um, it's unnecessary. So if you just have N-ethyl-N-methylbutanamine, uh, it's implied that the amine is on the butan, it's going to be on carbon one. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. And so here we have one, two, three R groups. Since we have three R groups, we would have to figure out which of these three R groups is the shortest. And so we have uh, a one carbon, and we have a one carbon. And so this is going to be N-methyl. And then this is going to be N-methyl. And so for the third R group, we have one, two, three carbons. So this is going to be propanamine. And then on propanamine, it looks like we have um, a carbon that is on the second position, second carbon. So this is carbon number one. This is carbon number two. That's carbon number three. And so if you wanted to, oh no, my screen froze again. So if I wanted to build on <clears throat> to describe the parent chain, I would simply state two methyl. Um, here in this case, carbon number one is bonded to this nitrogen. And so uh, just to communicate to the reader, we have one uh, dash one dash propanamine. Okay. And so if you didn't include that, um, and if you just shortened it up to two methyl propanamine, it would be implied that carbon number one would have the nitrogen. So now that we've numbered, oops. So now that we've um, described, uh, so now that we've numbered our carbons and described every single carbon or substituent that's on this chain, we're going to go ahead and put all of these pieces together. Oops, what did I do? And so since I have two N-methyls, I can combine them 
and say n comma n dash dimethyl now that I've um, listed this out I'm going to go I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste what I wrote here so n comma n dash dimethyl this is going to be 2 methyl Propanamine. And so this would be um, our final name for this organic structure. Now, in the spirit of um, getting into the habit of drawing out what you named, uh, let's go ahead and do that. And so I'm gonna focus on my ending. I have a prop, so I have a three carbon parent chain. And I have an amine, so in front there's no number. So if there's no number, that's going to imply that's going to be on carbon one. And then I have a methyl on carbon two. Um, and I have this, 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 this drawn. Notice I have a dimethyl and an N. So that means I have a methyl connected to my nitrogen and another methyl that's connected to my nitrogen. And so that, this would be the skeletal structure of this name. And it's pretty much the same thing that you guys see at the very beginning. All right, and so um, let's go ahead and just do this compound for now. So here we have um, one, oh. We have one, two, three R groups. And so since I have three R groups, this is going to be um, a tertiary amine. And so this is my smallest. It's a one carbon. So I'm probably going to have to write N methyl. This right here is my second smallest. And so this is going to be a N ethyl. So there's two carbons. And this is going to be my longest carbon chain. And so here I have one, two, three carbon. Actually, four carbons. One, two, three, four. And so since I have a four carbon chain, this is going to be butanamine. And it looks like the nitrogen is bonded to the second carbon. So I need to put two in front of butan to indicate that the amine is on carbon number two. Um, since I have no other substituents left to name on my parent chain, um, I have named all of my pieces and now I just need to put it together. And so when I put my substituents together, I always um, organize it alphabetically, so therefore E comes before M, and so I would say N dash ethyl, then dash N dash methyl, and then I would go ahead and and uh, name the the parent chain. So it's dash two dash butanamine. And that would be it. Okay. And so looking at uh, 
this example here, we have um, a cyclic ring, and this is probably going to be our longest carbon chain, so that's probably going to be the parent chain. And so here I have n comma n dash dimethyl. So I have two methyl that is on the nitrogen. So this is a tertiary amine because I have three R groups. And so all you need to do is, is name the cyclic compound. And this is going to be cyclohexane. I'm going to erase the E to include the nitrogen. So it's going to be hexanamine. And uh, now that I've um, named this portion, I'm just going to go ahead and add in the very front the N comma N dash dimethyl. So N comma N dash di, probably have to move this. Methyl. And so if you guys recall, this is always going to be carbon number one. Um, since we're talking about cyclic rings. So wherever that nitrogen is covalently bonded to on the cyclohexane, that carbon is always going to be carbon number one. And there is no point for us to list that number in our final name. And this would be the name of this specific organic compound. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and do one more. And in this example, uh, we are going to learn how to name an amine, a tertiary amine with a double bond. Very similar to all of our previous examples. I have one, two, three R groups. So this is a tertiary amine. So these two carbons <clears throat> that's surrounding the nitrogen are the, have the least number of, of carbons. And so this is an N-methyl. This is also N-methyl. And so here I have um, this organic compound one, two, three carbons long. And so starting with the carbon that's covalently bonded to the nitrogen, this is going to be carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. And so since this carbon has a double bond, instead of saying propane, I'm going to say propene. So the E and E represents the, the double bond. But since this carbon number one is bonded to the amine, I'm going to erase that E and say amine. Now I have to tell the reader the carbon uh, in which where the double bond starts and the carbon um, that has the amine. And so I need to separate this out. Maybe I'll do it. And I'm going to say that on the first carbon, I have my amine. So this amine is on the first carbon. And on the second carbon, I have the beginning of my double bond. And so it looks like I have another substituent which is this guy, and this is going to be 2-methyl. So I have 2-methyl. Dash 2, dash propen, dash 1, dash amine. 
And so I'm not done yet. I This whole thing just describes this portion of my organic compound. I need to put these guys together. And so my final answer is going to be N comma N dash dimethyl. And by the way, these, they have to be capitalized. I think I forgot to mention that. Because they represent the nitrogen. And whenever you write the symbol for nitrogen, its chemical symbol is always capitalized. The first letter of that symbol is always capitalized. And so N comma N dash dimethyl And then we're just going to go ahead and copy this whole thing. So it's going to be 2-methyl, 2-methyl, dash 2-propen, dash 2-propen, dash 1-amine. All right, so it's a, it's a pretty long name, um, but once again, if I wanted to go from the name to the structure, I'm just gonna focus on my um, parent chain. So here I have prop, so that's a three carbon chain. Um, and then it looks like on the first carbon, so I'll make this carbon number one, I have an amine, so I need a nitrogen. And so that checks this off. Um, and so it looks like on the second carbon, I have a double bond. So this is carbon number two. And it looks like I have on the second carbon, a methyl. So I need to put a methyl there. And then it looks like I have two nitrogens, or I'm sorry, I have two uh, methyl groups on the same nitrogen. So I put one here and one here. And this would be the skeletal structure for the name that you guys see on the screen. Okay. All right, and so hopefully after going through these um, exercises, um, you guys, uh, are more you guys feel more comfortable you know naming and drawing these secondary and tertiary amines so that's pretty much it for this lecture video um i'll see you guys in another lecture video